also to continue actually the discussion we had in the morning. Please let me invite you on behalf of the ODA contact point for Roma and Sinti issues uh, to the side event on Roma and Sinti use, activism, participation and security, in which we will highlight uh, or actually launch a publication of uh, use related work and actually bring here at the table authors or people involved in the process uh, on, uh, on these particular topics. My name is Miam Karoli and I'm the chief of the contact point for Roman Sinti issues at the Office for Democratic Institution and Human Rights. The use of Roman Sinti communities represent a demographic of growing importance as there are a considerable proportion of the school age population and future workers in many participating states of the OECE. Improving the situation of Roman Sinti youth is fully grounded in the OECE commitments. The active participation of Roman Sinti youth is a priority in the organization's capacity building mandate under the action plan on improving the situation of Roman Sinti in the OSCE region adopted in 2003. In 2013, the OSCE held a supplementary human dimension meeting aimed at overview of the progress made during a decade since the adoption of the 2003 action plan where special emphasis has been made on Roma and Sinti women, youth and children, as well as on the improvement of public and political participation of young Roma. Participants of the meeting called on the OEC participating states to provide support to Roma youth to continue activism and integrate Roma youth issues in the mainstream youth agenda and highlighted the need for young Roma to be actively involved in politics and in local and central administrations, as well as observers in electoral processes in the OSC area. In follow-up to this, the OSC Ministerial Council decision, uh, sorry, the Ministerial Council adopted a decision, number four slash 2013, on enhancing OSC efforts to implement the action plan on improving the situation of Roma and Sinti within the OEC area, with a particular focus on Roma and Sinti women, youth and children. In particular, this Ministerial Council decision calls on the relevant OEC structures, so including the OEC and uh, ODR Office for Dem uh, Democratic Institution and Human Rights, to enhance their activities meant to build on capacities of Roma and Sinti women and youth organizations, with a view to promoting empowerment education and non-discrimination among Roma and Sinti women and youth, and to encourage the participation of Roma and Sinti women on an equal footing with men in all areas of life. On 8 to 9 December 2014, together with the Serbian authorities, the OEC ODIR contact point for Roma and Sinti issues organized a Roma and Sinti youth conference called Activism, Participation and Security in Belgrade, that brought together 61 participants, including 48 Roman Sinti youth representatives from 18 countries across the OEC region. Some of them are present here today. The conference provided a platform for Roman Sinti youth to speak about the issues that concern them in three thematic areas. The first one is the empowerment of social inclusion of Roman Sinti communities through youth activism, the participation of Roma and Sinti youth in politics and democratic processes, and thirdly, Roma and Sinti youth and security. The conference provided Roma and Sinti youth activists with a platform for becoming stakeholders in the process and for contributing to the future action plan in this respect. Conferences discussion were inspired by additional research conducted by young Roma and Sinti activists and scholars Outcomes of the conference and the background papers are presented here today in the report Activism, Participation and Security. And I hope by now you all have uh, received a copy. Have you? Yes. <laughs> of this report. This report um, gives a voice to Romans in the youth by highlighting the key conclusions and recommendation of the OEC participating states made at the Belgrade conference and presenting research. This report also includes important new statistical data on the situation of Roma and Sinti youth in 12 OEC participating states. This side event is organized to present the report, 
to continue the further discussion on the topics of activism and volunteerism, public and political participation, as well as security of Roma and Sinti communities from the angle of Roma and Sinti youth and their active engagement. It's also meant actually to give voice to Roma and Sinti youth, and I'm very happy to welcome here a representative of Roma and Sinti youth from across the OEC region and actually inspire for the debate and partly uh, will also reflect on what is within the report, what you can find, the information in the report, but also go beyond that. Uh, since we have little time, I will directly actually go into uh, presenting our introducers and I would like to first uh, introduce Amira Camberi. She's a young Roma activist and Roma policy research fellow at the European Research Centre on Migration and Ethnic Relations in Utrecht in the ne Netherlands. She's an author on a very interesting paper based on the results of an UNDP European Commission Regional Roma Survey from 2011 which is included also in the report we present here today. She will present the position of Roma youth in Central and Southeastern Europe, results from the Regional Roma Survey 2011. Emira Cambera would like to hand over to you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Ermira Camberi, and um, I'm a recent graduate from a research master program in migration, ethnic relations, and multiculturalism at Utrecht University in the Netherlands, where I'm currently finishing a policy research fellowship on, uh, on Roma issues at the European Research Center on Migration and Ethnic Relations. Today, I would be presenting a paper that I wrote uh, as a consultant for the contact point for Roma and Sinti issues at ODIR. And uh, with the help and feedback of Tatiana Peric, I would like to recognize that <laughs> right now. And, uh, and I, can, I believe I can start now, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So much of the public discourse um, on Roma issues revolve, revolves around Roma communities in, as a whole, so in general. Therefore, we know much less about specific the specific position of Roma youth in Central and Southeastern Europe. For this reason, I decided to write this paper in, or, in order to shed some light, and uh, the aim of the paper is to pr provide empirical knowledge, so numbers, really, about the position of uh, Roma youth in Central and Southeastern Europe. For this purpose, I used a large-scale data set from the Regional Roma Survey in 2011, uh, which was conducted uh, with the help of UNDP, the World Bank, and the European Commission in 12 countries in Central and Southeastern Europe, most of which were also part of the decade of Roma inclusion. And as you can see, the timing is quite right because it's at the middle of the uh, decade of uh, Roma inclusion. Um, the importance of this data set is that it focuses on social and economic developments between Roma and non-Roma respondents, and uh, since there is very little quantitative data that exists about the Roma in general, and let alone about Roma youth, I had to use this one, and it provides some great insights into, uh, comparatively into the position of Roma and non-Roma respondents. However, um, one of the things that we should keep in mind is that this uh, survey targeted uh, Roma who are risking mar marginalization and who face social exclusion. Therefore, the uh, number of respondents on oh, the sample, sorry, is uh, not representative of all Roma in Central and Southeastern Europe. Therefore, that means that we are lacking data about socially included Roma. So we are presenting more about those who are more in danger of social exclusion. Um, so the sample was of Roma youth was defined as respondents between ages 18 and 30, or all respondents born between 1981 and 1993, in reference to 2011, which uh, concluded a um, sample of 11,682, 75% of which were Roma, and 51% uh, female. So the insights that are presented in this paper are extracted through descriptive statistics disaggregated by Roma, non-Roma group membership, gender, and country. Uh, sorry, Megan. Can we have the viewing on the screen? Yeah. All right. 
because I would be presenting figures, yeah. so it would be important. I think we have a small technical problem. Yeah. I just saw Eric here. Um, because uh, you will see uh, statistics, uh, and it should show up on the screen, but it doesn't show. Could maybe the technician help us that we have the power presentation uh, visible? So this data, um, I chose the domains to present today based on the, their importance, of course. So some of them are education, um, employment, access to social services, health insurance, perceptions of institutional support, and uh, perceived discrimination. So what we're waiting for to see now are figures where I would be presenting some of the striking differences between Roma and non-Roma youth in the, in the 12 countries in Central and Southeastern Europe. All right, all right, there. <laughs> Sorry, you didn't see this, but I already presented it, so I'll just follow the next one. All right, so education is uh, one of the key topics of Roma youth. It has been discussed a lot. We've um, heard a lot about uh, different kinds of policies that uh, aim at alleviating the social exclusion of Roma through education. And uh, for this purpose, I wanted to show you what is the highest level of uh, educational achievement among non-Roma and Roma youth com comparatively. All right. So as you can see uh, from the categories, um, no, no formal education, primary education, lower secondary education, upper secondary education, and post-secondary education, for most Roma, uh, the highest level of educational achievement is lower secondary education, which means one or two years of uh, secondary school, while for the non-Roma, it's uh, upper secondary school or finished three or four years of education. You can see that the difference in percentages is striking. However, what is more worrying are these percentages, where 24% of the Roma youth still have not had any formal education. Whereas uh, in terms of post-secondary education, we only have 0.3% of uh, Roma youth who've completed an undergraduate degree, master's degree, or a doctorate. This is, uh, these numbers are quite worrying considering the fact that there are so many uh, transnational scholarship programs that are supposed to provide access to a lot of Roma to enter education and actually finish an undergraduate degree or, uh, or more. Now, the same data is disaggregated by gender for women and men, Roma and non-Roma. Here we see that from all these groups, Roma women are, or Roma women youth, young Roma women, are the ones with the highest level no formal education, which is 27% from the entire sample. There are no particular differences in uh, the level of uh, educational achievement among uh, Roma women and men, and so is the same with non-Roma women and men. Now, the next uh, topic that I would like to talk about is employment, which is also very important for Roma youth. And uh, here um, I'm analyzing the, activi the activity status of Roma non-Roma youth based on paid work full-time, paid work part-time, paid work, ad hoc jobs, full-time homemaker, in-school student, and not working. So the percentages of uh, Roma and non-Roma youth with paid work full-time is uh, quite striking. As you can see, for the Roma youth is as low as 7%, and for the non-Roma, 23%. And here you can see that 49% of all respondents, non -Rom, uh, sorry, Roma youth respondents, are not working, have no jobs, and only 26% for the non-Roma. If you see the, the school student category, you can see that these uh, Roma youth who are not working are also not students because the number is as low as 4% for the Roma and 20% for the 
non-Roma. Here is the same uh, graph, however dis disaggregated by gender, uh, for women and men, Roma and non-Roma. Here we can see that for Roma women, most of them are actually full-time housewives. And for Roma men, it's, um, they, are, they do ad hoc jobs, paid work, or 16% of them. Again, high percentages of uh, uh, non-employment for Roma youth, 46% for women, and 54% for men. So, in other words, if the women are not involved in paid work, which is, as you can see, only 4% uh, of paid work full-time, they're usually housewives. Now, in terms of types of employment among Roma and non-Roma youth, uh, as you can see, I have uh, included letters because of the long terms, so I would just... Uh, unveil the terms as I go ahead and uh, describe the, the details of the findings. Now for A, and that would be employee in a private uh, company, for both Roma and non-Roma, most of them uh, are employed by private companies, although the number is double. So 33% for Roma and 62% for non-Roma. The second highest type of employment is uh, for, for, the, um, sorry, for the Roma, that's unskilled, seasonal, or hourly worker, which is 29%. And for the Roma, for the non-Roma would be employee in a public or municipal company. In other words, most uh, uh, of the non-Roma are employed by private companies and public companies, whereas the non-Roma are either unskilled workers or employed by the private companies. Now, I also wanted to look into the, um, the status of the employment of Roma and non-Roma youth and whether it is permanent, temporary, seasonal, or periodical. For uh, the non-Roma youth, um, it's divided between permanent and periodical whereas the almost double the amount of uh, non-Roma youth have a permanent employment. And this uh, difference is quite striking. Which uh, leads me to the access to social services. Um, as you can see, these percentages are very similar to the previous figure, where 34% of uh, the Roma have both pension and health care, compared to 68% among the non-Roma. Uh, this leads me to believe that only those who have permanent uh, employment actually can enjoy pension and uh, health care. And none for 58% of um, Roma and 25% of non-Roma. Right, for the health insurance uh, among Roma and non-Roma youth by country, I will describe the meanings of the uh, letters. So AL is for Albania, and then Bosnia, Bulgaria, Croatia, Czech Republic, and Hungary. I've divided, as I said previously, there were 12 countries, so I've divided into two slides, so it's clear about the differences between them. 76% of the Roma respondents in Albania don't have any health insurance, and uh, similar numbers were discovered in Bulgaria of 56%. However, the non-Roma in Albania and uh, Bulgaria are also among those with low health insurance. The success stories, surprisingly, are in Czech Republic and Hungary, where a similar number of Roma and non-Roma youth enjoy health insurance. Here I'm uh, presenting data from Macedonia, Moldova, Montenegro, Romania, Serbia, and, and Slovakia. As you can see, in Moldova and Romania are some of the lowest uh, beneficiaries of uh, health insurance. 
And uh, similarly, again, non-Roma are also, um, compared to other countries, uh, benefit from health insurance less. And the success stories, again, surprisingly, in Slovakia, 96% both Roma and non-Roma youth. Okay. All right. So uh, I've been asked to come to an end, so I would just um, briefly show that uh, in terms of perceptions of institutional support, according to the Roma, they need uh, more financial help from the local government, the central government, and the perceived discrimination is mostly perceived on the basis of ethnicity, 36% for the women, Roma women, and 35% for Roma men. I would like to stop here. Okay. I know it's Sorry. extremely interesting, but since we have three more speakers and we have to leave the room at 2.30, and uh, I would just like to remind that you find the statistical data also in the report. And maybe we can come back uh, yeah. with discussion and then further go in details. Um, our next uh, uh, kind of panelist I would like to introduce is Tudor Taba. He is a young Roma from Romania, holds master degree in political science from Central European University in Budapest, and he has been working in the field of human rights and anti-discrimination since 2009. In his work, he focuses particularly on access to education of Roma youth but also deals with political participation, housing, and health issues. He, is also an, he also authored uh, in uh, the report uh, we present here today the political participation of Roma youth, what is it and why do we need it? I just mentioned it he, uh, here. He will not uh, talk about this, but actually focus in his presentation on key concerns and recommendations from 2014 from the Belgrade Conference. Uh, of romance in the use. And I have to apologize, I will cut after 10 minutes, so we give also the chance to the other panelists. Tudor. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen. I see that most of you here are from the civil society, so the majority of the, the state representatives and uh, authorities leave us. Uh, I can see that still are a few members, but still the majority are uh, civil society. So I will concentrate more on the um, on the issues related to political participation in the true sense of the word, meaning uh, elections and uh, candidates. Uh, okay, so uh, as Miriam said and, and, and uh, Ermira also said earlier, there was a conference in uh, Belgrade uh, last year in December, and there we had a kind of a working group of uh, youth uh, representatives from all over the OSC uh, region, and we made uh, uh, a list of issues and recommendations to the participating states, to the Roma representatives, and also to the, uh, the, to the uh, uh, ODIR office. Um, the most important issues that we uh, we discussed and we found solutions uh, for um, are the, the following. Um, one of the problems that are uh, mostly evoked by the um, by the youth is that uh, the, they they don't have an, a platform from which they they can launch and <clears throat> from from which they can have. A, uh, political career, um, and to this matter, we responded that it is necessary that the states should include in their national action plans uh, the establishing of platforms for uh, Roma youth uh, uh, and women, especially uh, for women, because women are, uh, even though youth are highly underrepresented uh, in 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 politics, women are the situation of women is even worse. Um, another, another issue which we, we struggled upon was the education, and I'm talking here about the political education and the uh, sense of uh, civic belonging. Uh, as we all know, in uh, most of our countries from which we, we come from, uh, Roma suffer from discrimination and uh, exclusion especially in the political realm. Uh, what was uh, interesting for us was to see that 
Roma youth in general and Roma, uh, not, not, not even youth, Roma in general don't understand what political participation means. And when we, you can see in the background paper, papers of, of me and uh, my colleagues that there is kind of debate on what uh, political participation means. Also, because of that, we tried to to focus only uh, in in this sense of political participation on voting and uh, candidates for uh, I don't know all kinds of of elections. Um, as my colleague Atana Stoyanov said earlier, we need voter education uh, in all of our countries because even if people are willing to vote for a candidate they are not able to properly, properly fill the, the, the actual uh, uh, forms for, for, for voting the, for, for a candidate. Also, uh, when it comes to uh, candidates, uh, there is a lack of um, a political, um, there's a lack of, of, of political platform, as I said earlier. Um, there are no parties or very, very few parties which are willing to take a young Roma candidate without no money to support his own uh, campaign. And we also recommend to the uh, Odir office and also to the member states uh, that it is necessary to develop some platforms uh, for Roma youth and women from which they can uh, further launch into into politics. Uh, as we all discussed this uh, couple of days here, uh, all of the member states agreed that uh, the participation of Roma youth and uh, women is necessary, it is a priority. However, we cannot still identify some concrete measures that the states have taken uh, to solve this problem. Uh, Further on, um, we discussed about the um, uh, only issues here, but we also come with solutions. Um, it's necessary for us to develop a sense of civic belonging. Uh, Roma are not seen as citizens in any of our countries. They are seen as secondary citizens, as uh, our colleagues said earlier in the plenary session, uh, we are seen as uh, as people who are immigrants, even if they live in their own countries for more than I don't know two or three generations. Uh, that's why we are urging the, uh, uh, the 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 authorities and the member states and also some other uh, institutions that are able to do this to create some programs. Uh, and training programs, internship programs within the, the institutions so can Roma can have a sense of how the institutions are working and what the institutions can do for them and the other way around, around what is their actual uh, input within an institution. For example, um, I've seen, I, I, I saw that uh, a lot of people to not know what a councillor does in a, in a mayoralty, for example. And that's why we have to, to, to speak with the people and actually show them what, it, what is their purpose there. Um, further, I would like to address uh, especially the state representatives which are still here. And uh, I would love to, to say that um, Yes, there is some progress, but uh, uh, if we have two deputies, one senator and one mayor for two million people, then we have a problem. Um, we have to raise the number of Roma youth uh, and women uh, political candidates, and we need voter education. Okay, so I'm asked to stop, but I'm 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 really looking forward for uh, questions, and I would love to this this event to be more of a debate than us presenting uh, facts. Thank you.
you very much, Tudor. You mentioned only a very few recommendations which focus particularly on political participation, but there were numerous others made a particular focus in on activism, voluntarism at the grassroots level, and also on Roma and security, which I think is a more unexplored topic and actually brought forward a very interesting approach because it had a very broad human security approach. So you might want uh, to look uh, into the report and also familiarize with uh, the recommendations made by Roma and Sinti use, which as it clearly hint also to the OEC and not only to the human dimension, but actually to all the three dimensions um, to be addressed. <laughs> Uh, I would like uh, to introduce uh, Anina Ciccio, our next uh, panelist. She's a young Roma woman with a French-Romanian citizenship. She's currently doing her master's degree in law at the University of Sorbonne in Paris, poised to become a lawyer. In 2013, she published her autobiography, Je suis Tzigan et je le reste, de Cam de Rome à la Sorbonne. I'm Roma and I remain from Roma camps to Sorbonne. Anina Chuchu uh, has also been a member of the NGO La Voix de Rome and is strongly committed in the international movement for defending of Roma women's rights. Um, she has not uh, been uh, uh, part of uh, the scholars who wrote in the publication, but actually what uh, we try to do is because I said before that we had a number of countries represented in Belgrade, but no one from France, so we thought it would be actually good to complement this with also Roma youth from France, and she will talk about the importance of Roma youth activism in fighting discrimination. Anina, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to, tell you, to thank the OAC Odier for inviting me and allowing me to take part to this event. As you said, I am a Roma woman with both Romanian and French citizenship, but my family had to leave Romania in 1997 because my parents, like many other Roma at that time, lost their job due to anti-Gypsism. In Romania, Roma were usually the first to be fired during the transition years following the revolution. We arrived in Italy after that, and on the way, we enjoyed an episode of police brutality. We ended up in one of the biggest and most miserable shanty town in Eastern Europe, Casilino, in Rome. Six months of hell. We left Casilino, and we reached France. In our mind, France was supposed to be heaven on, he on earth. And it might have been for some heaven, but for us, nothing, nothing but misery, dirty squads, and former military barracks, or living in trucks. We are helped by some kind French citizen. My parents were able to find a job, and my three sister and I were able to start going to school in France. At that time, I was nine years old. And Despite the teasing and the racial discrimination of my school colleagues, I decided to hard work and to show them they are wrong. I decided that I will not become what everybody outside my family expected of me. In 2014, I received my master's degree in law at Sorbonne University in Paris. In 2013, my book, Je suis Tigane et je le reste, was published. It impacted the French public, but also the Romanian one, because my book was translated and publicated in Romania in 2014. And after I realized that by myself, I cannot change much. So I decided to join the French NGO La Voix de Rome and started working on what I think is a necessary change. For us, Roma, the change is a, mass, is a matter of survival. But the mainstream society has no interest in the change. Change will come only from the margins. And comfortable European society are racist against us. I know it's hard to hear this, and it is hard for me to say because I suffer from this. 
My first meeting with Roma youth in 2013 was empowering thousands of young, smart, proud, dedicated Roma activists, as I can see here today. And it made me believe that we can transform our communities and the society we live in. So I decided to be myself an activist. And coming from a Roma traditional family, I know that the Roma woman sees the worst of the racism and exclusion. You are the margin of the margins, exposed to prejudice and violence of the Roma Many of the Roma young girls give up far too early to have a dream or to achieve their dreams. They end up being what is expected from them to, to be and is expected them not to have the success of women of the mainstream society, but rather the opposite. Far too many Roma girls end up in poverty, forced or early marriage, and are exposed to an extreme violence. But I realize that this violence against Roma women is only the natural result of the violence by the mainstream society against Roma, Roma community. Roma men, humiliated and marginalized, have no other choice to find themselves their own go scapegoat. And we have to be really careful, we, Romnia, Romani women, that feminism, fe feminism is not becoming a, a much more and another reason to increase racism against the community, as it is, for instance, the case with Muslim people across Europe by the topic of Islamic veil. This is what I try to change. And to change it, we need not only much more involvement of Roma in our societies, but also your help. Dealing with strident anti gypsyism and increased social Exclusion of Roma it cannot be the task of either Roma or not no Roma. It needs to be together. And this combined action to be successful. We, to be successful need that we must be creative and courageous to build a new inclusive society, truly united in diversity, such as is our Romani people. But this submersive and constructive reversal will only succeed if we manage to overcome our personal and communitarian egoism, if we include in our project and our join to our forces those of all other communities who are victims of the same marginalization all over the world as black people, Muslim, LGBT, and especially on the margin of this marginalized community, the woman, we. So, I am strongly convinced that the Romnia will bring the necessary change in the Roma community to make it able to transform the whole society. So, I am here to help. You are here to help. But this one, this one is one only omitting. Roma participation needs to become a normality and not an exception. The OAC is indeed at the forefront pushing Roma participation, but it's, it is far from enough. Much more needs to be. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nina, and also giving a testimony of your personal experience and uh, how it matters actually to engage. Uh, I would like to come to Silas Kropf and introduce him. Um, we are actually very happy to have for the first time I think a to use among us uh, here at the HDRM. Uh, Silas Kropf is a young Sinti activist from Germany dealing with various issues related to Roman Sinti youth empowerment. 
Silas is a second chairperson of the German association Amaro Drom e.V., working to strengthen cultural self-organization of youth and an active participant of various activities related to youth issues. He will present the situation of Roma and uh, sorry of Sinti youth in Germany. Silas. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I have been invited to tell you about the situation of Sinti youth, as it often seems to be neglected. But is it possible to talk about the situation? Of course, it is not. There is not one reality that reflects youth's life. But there are a lot of different realities, which, if you combine them, may reflect a more or less reliable picture of their situation and their life. To be honest, I am not able to deliver this reliable picture, and I cannot imagine one single person on earth who is able to do so. The only thing that I can do, and that's what I will try during the next few minutes, is to show you concrete examples of circumstances to tell you what happened to different people. And maybe this will allow you to understand the range of this whole thing. Because every person is unique, as unique as, you, as their personal situation. I should maybe start with my personal background. I have to tell you that me personally, I have never been a victim of persecution, segregation or discrimination. You might think that this is because of the open-mindedness of the society where I grew up. I can reassure you that this, is, that this is not the case. I cannot even count the times how often I have heard about negative stereotypes and defamation of our culture. The only thing is, they were not linked to me. Let me tell you why. My family always told me to hide what we are. It was kind of rooted in my education at home. The reason, therefore, is quite simple. It was fear. Fear of being persecuted and murdered again, just how the NS regime did during the Second World War. Doesn't that sound weird? I mean, this is 2015. We are living in democratic states, being free of doing whatever we want. But the generation of my grandparents and their parents have lived the terror of the persecution by the Nazis. Even if the NS regime has gone, the fear has not. It still remains, even 70 years after the end of the Second World War. Only two years ago, when I was 18, I started asking myself, what is going on? I have good results at school and at university. I have a lot of friends who love me for who I am. Why shall I hide a big part of my personal identity? Is there any reason to be ashamed of myself? This was when I started to talk openly about my roots, my culture, my family's history. The reactions were positive most of the time. It was rather a kind of incomprehension. How can this young, intelligent guy be a so-called gypsy? He's just like us. He doesn't fit into the picture we have got from gypsies. Or, to say it in other words, I didn't fit into the stereotypes. And this shows you at which point stereotypes are still present in the mind of the society. Let me tell you about some other cases where young people were known as Sinti, where these young people had to suffer from these stereotypes and everything that comes around. Hey, the gypsies are coming. This is one of the sentences that my mother whose parents were showmen and traveled from village to village, has heard when she entered a school for the first time. And this was not all. After these exclamations came different acts of physical violence. Can you tell me why this happened? She was a young, innocent girl, no idea what, of what she has done to the other children in school that would justify this reaction. This is another example for the obvious presence of stereotypes towards the culture and life of Sinti. Now you may wonder why I tell you this. <clears throat> I mean, Sinti are living for many hundred years in Western Europe. The persecution of my relatives happened like 70 years ago. The discrimination in school that my mother has suffered from is nearly 40 years ago. 
And actually, my intention is to tell you about the present. Where's the link? Nowadays, in 2015, <clears throat> in a European Union which is known for its democratic principles, for the defense of human rights, we still live exactly the same. The child of one of my cousins has finished primary school last year. The German educational system envisages a separation in different types of secondary schools depending on the performance that students have shown in the last two years of primary school. This child had good marks all the time and therefore should be qualified to attend the classes in a gymnasium, the, sec uh, the school that ends with a diploma qualifying for university admission. When his parents received the recommendation from his teacher, they wondered why there was no recommendation for a gymnasium. During a meeting with the teacher, the teacher made his point clear, very clear. Sinti children don't need to attend a gymnasium. However, they don't need an academical education as they will work in unqualified jobs when they have finished school. And if that, if that does not sound like an institutionalized kind of discrimination, I would not know how to define it elsewise. Two years ago, in the context of an interview with a nationwide news channel, Paul Würdig, a German rapper and mus musician known under his pseudonym Sido, explains that he and his mother, a German Sintetzer, were confronted uh, several times to defamation and the stereotype of the thieving gypsy. He talks about complete offener racismus, entirely open racism. All these different fates show that the situation of each person is unique and not necessarily comparable to another. But they teach us that we have to raise awareness, to empower young people to fight discrimination, to become active citizens in their countries, the European Union, the whole OSCE area, and to make them able to raise without fear. And this is a task for all of us. Everybody can do something to make this world a little better. Let's start it together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Svilas, but thank you for all the panelists, uh, which I think had very interesting introductories. And I would like with this to actually hand over to you and give the floor to questions. We have exactly 10 minutes. I see one hand, someone else, a second one. And, okay. So uh, I would like first to give the floor to uh, Oana Tava, sorry, <laughs> then to, I think, Priscilla Taco, and then Jan Hero from Slovakia. So first, uh, Oana Tava. Thank you for all for your presentations. They were very insightful and interesting. I have a rather a comment with regard to um, handling uh, feminism for fear of uh, uh, strengthening uh, discrimination and racism towards Roma. Uh, I think that uh, when uh, there is no equality for women, regardless of their ethnic background, this cannot be put under silence, regardless of uh, any other reasons. Uh, it is true that cultural values should be respected, but cultural values do not trump human rights and do not trump women's rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then Priscilla Taco. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy um, for Silas and for Anina. Uh, they inspired me so much. It's the first time that I'm meeting them, and I I just don't want to see them here, but um, to be promoted as much as they can, and to see the other side of the Roma, that people usually see us just the uneducated one. Um, second, I want to. Uh, for the paper of uh, Ermira, um, in fact, they are. Uh, I was reading the report right now, and uh, unfortunately, uh, if the situation uh, we see the situation now, I think it is getting worse. Uh, and I'm comparing with it with Albania. It will be good if it change, but uh, uh, policies in our countries, but not only, are not approaching so much Roma issue. And um, 
sometimes they do strategy action plans um, by uh, taking the Roma, uh, but not uh, listening to them. And uh, we, we don't want to be just a passive beneficiary, but even active one. Um, even for uh, Mr. Taba, uh, participation in, uh, in politics, um, in fact, uh, it is very important that we have to be part of it, but um, it's even, let's say, another problem. Usually we see uh, people that uh, are represented us in politics, but they are getting very um, fast uh, manipulated. And uh, the reason is because they, um, sometimes they see their interest and not the interest of community. So I think uh, that uh, how we should get involved on it is first to start with the steps by taking some voluntary uh, steps, being active, uh, raising the issue of our communities and if uh, we will have the support of the community then we will be very able to, to raise the voice and to um, make better the situation. It's very important that we have to feel and to be proud of ourselves, our identity. If I, we don't show ourselves who we are, then we can't do nothing. And I it's not just in Albania because we don't have so many cases that are uh, representative or being part of politics, but um, that is very negative side. And the, the politician then uh, have uh, use it like uh, you don't have the correct people. We don't want just to be um, uh, representative, but even to participate it with a full uh, packet uh, on it. That monitoring, implementing, uh, okay, uh, and, uh, and that's all. I'm very happy again that I, I see those youngsters and not just them because they are very inspired, but even during the session that I saw even others uh, that are raising the issue of Roma. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, then I would like to take also the question from Jan Hero. Then we do an answer round, and then I saw the U.S. delegation would also like to raise a question. Is there someone else? Okay. <laughs> Let me just say, so it will be the U.S. delegation. Then, uh, okay, two persons here. There was another one here. No. Then it's Carolina and Mariana Berwitsch. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you very much for the floor uh, uh, it was inter it is in uh, interesting for for me to to be by the site even and it is a, a very good that uh, it's related to the uh, topic of empowerment of youth and uh, thank you for all presenters because it was interesting for me as well and uh, I, I would like to just react because uh, Mr. Taba uh, put the question to, to people ca uh, coming from governmental bodies and I, I would like just to react as uh, be uh, ca working on plenary office of uh, Slovak, Republic, Slovak government for Roma communities which is part of the Ministry of Interior and really what uh, it is uh, important uh, to create the atmosphere and conditions for, for Roma use and I think it is it is a big challenge for us. And uh, maybe just uh, two uh, two moments uh, in politi in political participation. It's it's uh, really uh, we have the chance that we have had one party called Common People, which has given offer to Mr. Polak to be MP, uh, and it's I, I, and we could see that this is very important uh, moment for some bringing the change in Parliament as well. And, and uh, I would like to say that uh, we, uh, by the la uh, important is the common, common, uh, communal uh, uh, elections. And by the last 2014, we have uh, had uh, 33 mayors, Roma mayors, and uh, 13, uh, 390 members of local governments. Uh, but uh, Yes, it seems uh, uh, in numbers good, but not, not very good to the number of Roma people. But, but what is important, what would I, as a maybe example, the, the challenge uh, for a governmental body to, to create a platform for uh, use 
And uh, now we, uh, from our office, we use the offer from uh, European uh, Union uh, to create a platform, national platforms. And in this framework, we designed it, uh, we, will, we will expect if it will come agreement for this project. And we would like to create uh, the platforms on the national, uh, regu regional, and local level. Uh, th this platform we will use uh, for uh, for uh, this, uh, the, the uh, strategy uh, by implementing uh, the by, by evaluation and monitoring. And uh, what is important, uh, the part of this uh, platform would, would be used. And uh, parallel as well, we would like to use uh, this project for building capacity of use, Roma use. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this. And I think that links up actually to one of the recommendations made uh, today in the plenary to actually at national level include Roma use and women at a uh, mechanism actually to cite about uh, issues relating to Roma and Sinti. Since there were more statements made uh, than questions, and I already see my colleague who hints to us that we have soon to leave the room, I would like to give the floor to all the questions and then we make one round and I will help actually to then rem remind on the question which were posed. Uh, Erika Schlager from the US delegation. Thank you. I just wanted to briefly say um, how much I appreciate the presentations here this afternoon. You have profoundly moving uh, and important stories to tell, and I'm really grateful that you could be here and share them with us. But also, more broadly, the civil society engagement today from 8 o'clock this morning and, you know, through the day um, is really important for the work that the OSCE does. Uh, we want to have, governments want to have a dialogue with civil society, and we certainly achieved that with everyone here this morning, and I thank you for that. Thank you very much. Uh, then the lady, I think you're a student. Uh, yes, um, I'm a student. Uh, so my only question is, uh, do you think the new uh, susta 17 Sustainable uh, Development Goals by the UN is going to help the Roma youth in education, politics, and poverty uh, issues? That is a question, Sola Konda. Thank you. Well, I just uh, want to ask about the Ministerial Council decision, particularly focusing on Roma Sinti women, youth, and children. Do you have anything like in cooperation with the Ministry of Youth in Ukraine, if that possible? And also, there is another action plan for youth in the Council of Europe. And then, you know, it's interesting how do you have any plans in cooperation to do something for Roma youth? On, on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then we move to the other end of the table, Carolina and then Marianne Berwitsch. Uh, I also would like to uh, have a comment here and uh, thank very much, uh, oh dear, especially Contact Point for Roman Sinti issues uh, for this report. I think there is uh, still um, lack of um, publications and the data pr produced by the Roma youth uh, themselves on the topics regarding them. So I think this is a fantastic contribution. And, uh, and also to thank all of the panelists. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, very inspiring to, to, to see you all uh, giving your professional advices and having your own professional background. And I agree with Erika. I mean, the session this morning, I think it showed how much the youth is engaged. And it's not, uh, I remember when we started the work with Ternipe several years ago on the Roma youth issues, the, the Roma youth was not on the agenda of the, the, on the institutions at all. I mean, we were being put into one cluster of being a Roma group. But the, there are different needs in our community. And I think that this, uh, this just proves that uh, the Roma youth is finding it its place. And I hope it's from being in the agenda, on the agenda, it will now start to create the agenda also of the institutions. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Marianne Berbet. Thank you. Mariana Berbeck from Open Society Foundation Human Rights Initiative. Um, I really congratulate you on this report. I was also looking through it. It's, I think, the first one that's comprehensive analysis of the situation with Roma youth. And within our uh, foundation, we really strive to focus on the um, uh, human rights and anti-discrimination element. And I saw that one of the main conclusions was the lack of reporting of instances of hatred, discrimination, and other kinds of ethnically and racially based 
um, violence, um, I would propose that we talk into way how we can use the existing anti-racism um, um, and other kinds of networks that include youth. Um, general youth and actually insert the issue of uh, um, anti-Romani uh, sentiment and prejudice in those networks as well. I think there is lots of discussion at the European level about policies towards youth because the European Union first and foremost realizes that this is the future of the, our entire European area. At the same time, I would like to flag and recommend in discussions, uh, we have never heard any kind of discussions on the budget and money. And I think for us, person, for me personally, but also for us in the foundation, the money that governments put behind whatever declaration and, and policy documents that they prepare has to become a main issue of discussion. Even for the Roma youth strategy, there ha that means that the, the policy has to come with specific financial commitments, which at the moment is very, very difficult to obtain, primarily because the rights of Roma are perceived in majority of our countries, especially in the countries with the predominant Roma population, as privileges. So how to get from the perception of the right to Roma as a privilege, something separate that people get, to actually this is mainstream. And the reason you are paying for this is because Roma minority has been treated uh, with severe uh, systemic discrimination for centuries. So, I'm putting on the table, if possible, collaboration on how to increase the reporting of violence against youth and how youth can actually defend uh, their own communities against this kind of extreme violence, but also discussion on the, what kind of money we can put behind the policies of, of inclusion. Thank you. Thank you very much for this. And I would uh, like to invite the panelists for a tour the table. I will just quickly uh, raise uh, the topics which were raised uh, by the audience and you can then choose to what you feel you would uh, like to answer. Uh, one point was made, uh, would uh, women's rights actually override uh, cultural practices? I put it in a more provocative uh, way and uh, we should uh, denounce from it. One question was about statistics. Uh, does it get worse? Uh, do we have anything about that? Then relating to political participation, I understand it's very important, but there's also a risk for manipulation. And how is the interlinkage actually to uh, communities and grassroots level engagement? And uh, then there was a question about whether the Millennium Goals would actually help to eradicate, uh, or is helpful for the Roma youth in eradicating uh, a disadvantage in education. And um, then I will take myself also at the end of the floor maybe to answer uh, to the question on cooperation and also the Ukrainian cause. Maybe Anina, would you like first to start? Uh, I'd just like to answer to Anna question about uh, feminism. Uh, and uh, I of course agree of the fact that we have to denounce the violence against women and the cultural tradition that uh, that are not a good thing for Roma, Roma women. But I was just saying that we have to be careful that it is not becoming another tool for racism. Uh, we women uh, have to also help the Roma men to fight together against the racism that the community is victim. Um, and just to say that uh, the situation of the Roma of the Roma woman is not a particular case, is not a Roma cultural tradition of that. It uh, has been existed in all uh, societies. Uh, it has the case in France, in Italy, some years uh, on the past. So we have not to, to forget that things can change together. That is. Thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, you were not here last year. We had actually quite an uh, elaborated debate about this, but I think it's something we should continue, actually, also within ourselves to talk about. Tudor, you would like to say something on uh, react to the uh, political participation, manipulation, grassroots engagement? Yes, uh, I would like to say that politics was never, it is not, and it will never be easy. Uh, but. On the other side, it's easy to manipulate one person, it's not so easy to manipulate 30 persons. That's why I said that we have to increase, we have to have the people to be there and, and move politics and, and introduce laws and 
whatever. But we have to be more than one. That's that's why the situation, the political situation of Roma, so far it is so bad because in most of our countries we had one man, uh, man, one man for the last 20 years in politics. That's not politics. Thank you, Emira. About statistics and whether it gets worse. Yeah, unfortunately, there is uh, not much quantitative statistics that uh, we can use publicly. So in order to write a paper, we actually have to ask for these statistics. So one of the reasons why this paper was based on the region of Roma surveys because it's very recent and also because it's publicly available. For example, there is also data from FRA on European countries on the same measures. However, it's not publicly available. So one of the things that I also recommended in my paper is that we need data. So we need data not only about um, Roma who uh, risk social exclusion, who live in Roma communities, in marginalized communities, but also we need to know what is the position of uh, so-called mainstream Roma who are comparable to the non-Roma in terms of social position. So that's one thing that we need. And another thing that was also mentioned um, about uh, the commitment of governments, I think, and the sustainable goals, right? Yeah. So I think it's very easy for governments to commit to something. However, what we lack is really action and taking uh, real action in, in which can lead to results. So I understand that it takes time. However, if we see real political will, I think we can um, achieve things not only uh, uh, fast, but we can achieve things that can benefit uh, the Roma and in their relationship with non-Roma. So that's uh, that would be my closing statement. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, I would also like to invite Silas Kropf. There was no particular question to you, but I, <laughs> I recall that uh, Mariana Babich actually spoke about how can we turn that actually society doesn't does not interpret rights for Roma as a privilege. I think you gave example of that, but maybe you want to say something as well. Uh, I would just like to start with two words about the sustainable development goals. Um, actually, the goals, they really sound great, like no poverty, uh, gender equality, that are all things that we are also fighting for. So, yeah, we are really looking forward that this will be the reality in a few years. But actually, it will depend on the concrete measures that will be put on in place. So for sure, in, um, depending on the measure, measures that will be taken, I am definitely sure that, it will, that, that this will help. Because every step that we do, if it's the governmental organizations or the non-governmental organizations, it will help. So um, let's do our best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just to reflect on two questions uh, made by Sola on Ukraine and uh, the Minister of uh, Youth and Sports, he said, with regard uh, to an action plan for youth. I think this is, uh, this is, is a vision maybe for some time ahead. Uh, we have not uh, had any contacts uh, in this regard. Uh, I also would like to take up uh, enhancing cooperation with the Council of Europe, and I'm happy to see that Ulrich Bunyas is here, the special representative on Roma issues of the Council of Europe Secretary General. And uh, I think we probably both agree that we do cooperate, including on uh, youth and women, but I think there's, of course, a lot of uh, room to improve coordination. We know we have you here today. I guess some of you will be soon uh, in Budapest, where the Council of Europe will host a, a big uh, youth meeting. And actually, I take this uh, call, actually, that this is something I think where in future uh, we should uh, more streamline and put our efforts uh, together and coordinate, actually, maybe for a bigger outcome or, or result of our initiatives. And um, so I take this rather as a call for us. I also want just to briefly reflect and say thank you very much for all who also commented on the report. I'm actually very happy that it gets this positive feedback, but I would like to give this back uh, to all uh, of you around the table and especially for those who contributed, because this is something I would say the ODA contact point facilitated, and you know that uh, Tanya was heavily involved from our side, and many thanks uh, to her for this. But in substance, it's actually your voice, and we are actually grateful that you cooperated uh, with us and uh, to make this possible. 
And uh, so the thanks in this regard goes back to all of you who were involved in some uh, processes uh, in, at some time in the past, including to Carolina and many more who, who are represented here. So take it and use this uh, also actually to engage in a dialogue with the OEC participating states. I would like to thank you very much for the attention and also your participation and active participation. I hope you still uh, bear with us this afternoon and would like with this to close this session. Thank you very much.